Hi guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we'll look into a scenario in which Northern and Southern Asia go to war. And to start off, I will quickly put in some naval dominance, as naval dominance will be a bit important, but not overly too important, guys. It's going to be mostly important in the South China Sea, as that's where all the islands live. And yeah, China somehow owns part of Vietnam. I don't even know why. Shows that. And well, yeah. And we'll probably make the naval dominance probably go up halfways through Japan, up the Koreas. And see how this goes. This is where the dominance is. You can have boats anywhere. But that's where dominance is. So yeah. So if you see... Naval colors, just remember that. It's not necessary. And also, your dominant area doesn't necessarily mean every inch has a boat. No. Or every kilometer. Or every mile. No. There can be red boats in blue waters. Just saying. In blue boats in blue water. And one of the first offenses is started by China in the mountains. Wait, what? As they move into India and Pakistan. Wait, that's weird. As they take the handle of Afghanistan with the help of Tajikistan. As they move into Jammu and Kashmir. Another offensive they begin is in the Myanmar and India. Because, yeah. And this is what I consider Northern versus Southern Asia. And they kind of get in the Bhutan. They try to invade jungles. But as we can see, that's not going to go well. They try to invade Laos. Well, it goes pretty good. And then while that's happening, Russia starting advances into Iran with the help of Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan with an Afghanistan war with the help of neighbors. And over here, they help out Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Turkey. With Turkey... Moving into northern Syria and taking Cyprus. Quickly, the front line here becomes more stabilized. And yeah. Same thing with this front that's close to Tehran. And then in Afghanistan, well, they pretty much stay like this because Afghanistan is almost impossible to invade. And while well, a move towards Delhi and India started, which they're pretty close to. And then they move down into Pakistan. And yeah. With India panicking, probably. Or maybe not. And China moves in further into Myanmar and India. And yeah. And yeah, they get pretty far. And then let's see how China's naval tactics do. Well, by using hypersonic missiles they have. Whatever. Yeah, I think those are things. They move towards Vietnam's coast, especially in the north, they're successful. And then towards Pakistan, Japan, and Korea moves towards. Why am I saying Korea? Because it's both North and South Korea. Because saying North and South Korea sounds weird. Wouldn't you agree? It just doesn't sound right, something. With their naval campaigns near the Philippines going 10 out of 10, 5 star. Yep, they go 5 star. And then they land in the ocean. Yep, yeah, they invade the ocean, guys. No, I'm kidding. As they invade the most northern Ireland. Wait, what? Not northern Ireland. This is the northern Philippines island. I believe Manila is on it. Manila Falls. Yep. It looks like as China starts a huge campaign with Japan and the Koreas and some of Russia's navy, as they manage to take out the Philippines, which was a major area they wanted. How did they take out the Philippines? I don't know. They just took it out fast. As they start heading into Thailand... They're still stalling in Vietnam somehow. And yeah. And then towards Delhi, they actually approach the city. 
As they break the front lines by the city, they encircle it and they end up taking Delhi. And with the taking of New Delhi leads to a uh, fall of the northern parts. But then again, India has a lot of populous cities that they could have went to. Well, I don't imagine the governments would surrender. With the government having escaped to Mumbai, which was a shock, and Islamabad's government moves to Karachi. Yep, you heard that right. With the Tehran offensive, which is headed towards Tehran, as Tehran falls, Iran still fights. As the South wants to win this war, which they might win, if they can exhaust the forces, as Turkey starts moving towards Israel, and the Iraq War begins. Yep. There's an Iraq War in a lot of videos. With this mountain giving up, basically. And then this allows a further push into Syria and Iraq. But they get stopped at Israel, who manages to kick them back in to out of Lebanon and back in this area where they came from. Yep. But then they continue their offensive this way. With the Iran front going pretty well. And then they dive this far that's not like it's not small. It's like a third of the country falls. With China finally entering into Nepal. And Bhutan, but they get there, and then they're fully stalled out. With China moving down towards Bangkok. Yep, you heard that. And they're taking Hanoi right now, which they managed to seize Hanoi. With North Vietnam falling. Yep, North Vietnam falls. And while a dive into this region has started. And yeah. It's a mega dive. It dives so far. That's good. Wait, what? No. They hit the coast. Now they want to go to war for the Strait of Malacca. Which a big naval engagement breaks out as China, Japan, and South Korea and North Korea try to take it. With India just sending more ships. And knocking this offensive all the way back to square one. And yeah. But so they just rechain, they just changed the plans to land in Malaysia. Why would they do that? Because they do. What's so interesting about this part of Malaysia? I don't know. But let's just say there's something good here that they want. Be anything. Let it be anything. It can be anything. With a humongous defeat in the Pacific, it's starting to become more uncertain if they can hold, like, they're on all of their broad front. But some people think they will. And in a few days, the forces reach Islamabad and take Islamabad, which is a big blow to Pakistan. Uh, but Karachi is still there. And yeah. China is seizing most of the north. Well, I'm starting an offensive down here and around basically Bhutan. And let's see how Russia's and Turkey's offensives are going. Well, in Iran, they're starting to move south. Especially over here, while Turkey is moving south into Iraq. But one thing was a surprise, and they didn't expect it, was Saudi Arabia and Israel starting a counteroffensive with the help of Iran. Which pushed Turkey far back. It's a big setback for Turkey. And they're basically neutralized, and then they do this. It's a huge defeat to Russia, too. And this is such a huge blow that it makes Iran look like this now. 
and then India, and then in Vietnam and Laos and Thailand and Myanmar, a big offensive is launched. It re-liberates all of northern Thailand, almost all of northern Laos, and then guerrilla fighting happens in Vietnam. Yep, you got that. You heard that right. Yep, just like in the Vietnam War, they copy their strategies. Wait, what? I don't even know. With the fall of Laos Front, well, China sending vessels through out there. Then this falls. With India moving to Bhutan, Bhutan kicks China out, but that was easy. With the offensive being made in this region. With China's offense defensive becoming pretty bad. And while Afghanistan kicks the north back, and then India comes up with some good a good strategy, which is basically knock them back at any cost, which goes pretty well. Even taking back their capital. Then Iran uses this help and does that. And then they move troops to the Middle East. How many people do you think they have in their military now? Well, they changed it to like four. They made it like seven figures. Actually, eight figures. So 10 million at least. Is that, but I'd say it's up to 50 million. And that's just counting one country. With Turkey in trouble as they get invaded. And Azerbaijan's another country in trouble. And Baku falls. And they move into Russia. And this Turkish offensive in the Turkey goes better. With Armenia capitulating in fear. With George, with the capitulation of Georgia. And quickly they move into Ankara and take the city. Because there was well training going on while China was on the offensive. One of the reasons the offensive got so far was because of this training. And well, now they're at Istanbul and they move into Europe. Wait, but this is only Asia. I guess Turkey was cheating. Maybe not. With India making a f doing this. Why do you think they would do this? Well, that's just to humiliate China, who took that from them in, I believe, 1962. There's enough. If that's wrong, please leave a comment about it. With them taking out half of Tajikistan, basically, and moving into Kyrgyzstan. With Turkmenistan, there's a big offensive on Turkmenistan's Caspian Sea coast. And through the center of the country. Uzbekistan is put into a tight position. And a lot of the water was turned off to it while they moved through this region. With Uzbekistan deciding to give up. Now, one problem happens as the Chinese Navy starts crumbling and Japanese. As a front line here, breaks which was a big one. Nobody realized they were holding so narrowly. And yeah, as they do this, and all these troops are getting encircled fast. Or they abandon when they have the chance, one or the other. As China's hold on the South China Sea became so uncertain that it even fell. They're willing for peace with the North, says the southern areas. But a lot of the northern countries don't want to give, it, give in. And them even threatening to kick all the Navy out of the ocean. And they laugh. Really? They laugh? And then this happens. And North Korea has a great idea. They will try using nukes. But they didn't realize that their system got hacked into while they were trying to use it, right? 
And boom. As the radiation seeps everywhere. Basically. Inside the country. As the country of North Korea collapses. In on itself. I guess that's why you don't use nukes. And yeah. With their country collapsing, shock is sent through the rest of the world. With them moving into mountains in Russia, with Dagestan and Chechnya falling, and then they just open this front up. With their main goal of getting Volgorod being a big goal, they make it to Volgorod, they take the city, and now they can move into Kazakhstan on two fronts. As usually when you take a big city, you get a big advance. With Ukraine cheering as this is happening, probably. And well, the next move is to get to Ankara. Not Ankara. What's it called? Astana. With the encirculation of Astana, Kazakhstan just surrenders. Quickly comes Kyrgyzstan's, and Mongolia just says, we're done with war. And Japan and South Korea lose islands and then say, we're done with us. Because Japan loses its southern island and South Korea loses an island. They give up on the war. And now it's just Russia and China and Taiwan fighting. Taiwan now realizes we can have independence, but only if we leave. So they leave the war. China says, we will never surrender, basically. But as we can see, look. As the specially trained troops for climbing mountains, they're kind of climbing them. And well, they take all the unpopulous areas and then they move into China a bit in the southern. With China seeing all hope is lost, them and Russia finally surrender and leave the war. While well, some nations are going to be punished harder, like Japan and South Korea aren't going to be punished as hard. North Korea collapsed, so they're probably going to get partitioned. Minor after the war. See? Tiny border changes here and there. Some countries like Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Armenia just stopped existing. Yep. What's another nation of it? Actually, none others. And then Tibet and Xinjiang with the worst borders possible exist. And, well, North Korea was partitioned, but there's one area nobody walked into, and it's called No Man's Land. Yep, you heard that right. There's a No Man's Land. And why is that there? Because, well, kinda, kinda, that nuclear disaster. But, yeah, a nuke was sent, but landed back on the same country. They had to leave the war. Then they collapsed immediately because they had no government. And then South Korea and China walked in and tried to take some land. And I don't know how that got broken, but somebody changed the path. Somebody did. Or maybe they, it was shot down and then another nuke was sent. But nobody knows. And everybody was too scared to send a nuke as they saw a country just die. And so I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe. Be pretty great if you did, though. Because we're trying to get to a bunch of subscribers. We're trying to get to 600 subscribers by July 1st. In case you don't know what July 1st is, that's Canada Day. So I'll have to do something about Canada. But that's besides the point. So yeah. But subscribe. We need to get 179 subscribers before then. So far, we're on the right track. But we need to speed up. Speed it up. Like three notches. We need to speed our subscriber growing up. So if you wouldn't mind, please like, subscribe, comment. That'd be great for this channel. That's all for today's video. Wild Mapper out.